Graphing, slope point form of a linear equation. Another form that we can use to express the equation line is slope point form. This form is useful when the y-intercept is not an easily graphed value. Example, y is equal to 1 half x minus 4 over 7. You'll notice that 4 over 7 is not something that is easily graphed accurately. So where does this formula come from? Well, it starts with the slope formula. And the idea is that we have all values on one single line, which means there's no denominator. So how do we get rid of or eliminate a denominator? We multiply both sides by the denominator, which in this case is x1 minus x2. So in my original equation, I'm going to multiply m by x1 minus x2, and I'm going to multiply my right-hand side by x1 minus x2. What I notice is that on the right-hand side, my x1 minus x2 will cancel out, leaving me with the given equation down below. x1 minus x2 multiplied by m is equal to y1 minus y2. Now, here's the thing. We can write it in this form, or we can switch sides and have the x value and the slope on the right-hand side. This is normally the more common method used. Examples. In this case, what we're going to be asked to do is look at the equation and identify its slope and the coordinate of a point that is on the line. So let's start with A. Now, first thing we know is we're going to write out our base form of the equation. Notice that I've put the form where m and the x values are on the left-hand side because it matches the given equation. Let's start with m. What is my slope? Well, what matches up with m is negative 2 over 3. Therefore, that, might, that means my slope is negative 2 over 3. Now, I need to find a coordinate. So, let's start with my x values. What I do is I write out my base formula here and I recognize I am subtracting a value. So what value did I subtract to get positive 3? Well, in order for that to work, it would have to be negative 3. Therefore, my x value from this uh, equation is negative 3. Now I'm going to look at my y values. It is y minus 5. My original equation is y1 minus y2. Therefore, what number would I have to enter in or subtract to get negative 5, that would be positive 5. So my y value is positive 5. Stop the tape now and try B and C, and when you're ready for me to do it, restart the tape. All right, well, let's do the same thing for B. Again, here is my base equation. Notice that I have switched to having my m and my x values on the right-hand side because in the original equation, my m and my x values are on the right-hand side. So let's start with slope. What matches up with m in my original equation? Well, that's going to be 2. Therefore, my slope is 2. I now need a coordinate that works for this. So I ask myself, what x value would I subtract to get a value of positive 1? Well, that would be negative 1. So let's go look at the y values. What value would I subtract to get a plus 4? So in order for me to get plus 4, that would mean I would subtract negative 4. Now again, notice my, the signs of both of my values are opposite the ones in the equation. Let's try C. So again, there is my base equation where m and my x values are on the right-hand side. So what matches up with m? Well, m matches up with 1 half. Therefore, my slope is 1 half. Now, I need to find my x values. Now, when I match up my x values, there is nothing there on my original equation. That, therefore, my x value for this situation must be 0. Now, let's look at the y values. What would I have to subtract to wind up with y minus 3? Well, that would be positive 3. So that is my final answer. I have a slope of 1 half, and the given point is 0, 3. 
My second example is the reverse. We are given information and we're asked to write the equation. So let's start with my base equation. And for my base equation, I'm gonna need slope or m. So I'm gonna replace slope with m. And I'm gonna replace my x and y values. So for x2, I'm gonna take it from the coordinate, which is negative uh, two. And for y2, I'm gonna take it from the coordinate, which is six. So I write out my base equation. Now, here's the thing. There are three things I don't know. I don't know the slope, I don't know y2, and I don't know x2. So let's start by filling in the slope. In this case, I'm told that the slope is negative three. Therefore, I replace m with negative three. I now need to put in my x value, and I was given that as negative two. I now need to put in my y value or replace y2, and I've told that that was six. Now, I'm almost done, but I think I can simplify this further because x minus minus two can be simplified to x plus two. That is my final answer. Stop the tape now and try B, and when you're ready for me to do it, please start the tape. All right, you're back. So again, I have a y-intercept of negative two and a slope of five over four. So let's start by writing out our base equation. At this point, again, I have three unknowns. I don't know y2, I don't know m, and I don't know x2. So I'm gonna start by putting in m. What is the slope they give me? They tell me my slope is five over four. So I replace m with five over four. I now need my x value and my y value but there's a problem. They don't give me a coordinate, they tell me the y-intercept. However, what do we know about the y-intercept always? We always know that the x value for the y-intercept or any point on the y-axis is zero. So what does that mean? That means my x2 must be zero. So what would be my y2? Well, my y-intercept is negative two, there I four, I put that in, for my y2. Now, notice there are some simplifications we can make to this equation. y minus minus two is the same thing as y plus two, and I don't need to include the zero in for my x2. So that would be my final answer. Example three. Here, we are asked to describe the graph from the equation and then graph the equation. So let's start by looking at the equation. y minus two is equal to two multiplied by x plus one. Let's start with slope. Well, what is my slope? It is the number in front of the x, so that my slope is negative two. But remember, I wanna write this in rise over run formula, so I need a fraction. So how do I write negative two as a fraction? That's gonna be negative two over one. Now I need a coordinate. I need my x value and I need my y value. So what x value would subtract to give me positive one? That would be negative one. What y value would subtract to give me negative two? That would be positive two. So if I were to describe what this graph should look like, I would say that the graph goes through negative one, two, and has a slope of negative two. Now I'm going to graph this equation. So in order to graph this equation, I need a starting point, and that's the point that they've given, negative one, two. So I'm gonna graph this point by going over one and up two and placing a dot there. My next step is I need the slope of negative two to help me find another point. So remember, slope is negative two over one when we consider rise and run. That would make my rise negative two and my run one. So I go down two and over one and I place a dot at the resultant. I now have two points that I can use to graph my line. So I draw my line. Notice I put arrows on the end because it keeps going on forever unless I'm told it stops. Now, here's the thing. 
what happens if I wasn't able to go down? Could I do this a different way? And the answer is yes, because the slope is negative, the numerator or the denominator can be negative. So instead of going down to or having my numerator negative, I could go up to and then over negative one. That makes my denominator negative, but the overall number is still negative. Notice how this is also right on the line. My final step is to always put a title. In this case, this is a graph of y minus two is equal to negative two multiplied by x plus one. 